title of the lecture tonight is about select lessons from Surah Al-Rahman. Um, I know that I have very limited opportunity to speak here in my short trip in Malaysia. So I was thinking a lot about which subjects to pick and Alhamdulillah they gave me the option to select subjects that I'd like to talk about. So in the limited time that I have, I thought it would be a really relevant and important reminder for myself and the brothers and sisters of the community here to hear about the, just the beauty of this surah and just at least some of the major themes that it covers in a very, very eloquent way. So I'll try to highlight what makes the surah beautiful and some things that we can take away from it that inshallah can make our lives better. Uh, so that's really going to be my focus in this talk. Okay. Well, the Ummah worldwide, subhanAllah, I've traveled very little. I've been somewhat to Europe, I've been to Qatar before here to come to the Muslim world and I've, now I'm here. So for me to talk about the entire Ummah is a little difficult. Though it is the case that because of my popularity on YouTube, I get emails and communication through Facebook and um, other means from all over the world. And what I've noticed after conversation, after conversation, after conversation, is that our problems are the same. That we're not really that different anywhere in the world. And the things that I've been working on for the youth and the Muslim community in the United States and the things I've been observing are really the same problems in some very minor differences that are found in other societies. So I would say the key ingredients or the key areas of focus for the Ummah are really a re-emphasis on fixing the family. I don't think that there's a healthy relationship uh, between husband and wife anymore. I don't think what we know what that means anymore. I don't think we're doing enough of a job communicating or creating transparency and comfort between parents and children that are growing up. As our children grow up, they communicate with parents less and parents understand what our youth are going through less and that's a problem. So we need to create a kind of awareness to be able to make that communication uh, easier, that transition easier. Um, I also think that a lot of times we emphasize things when we talk about our deen, we emphasize things that only matter to a few people uh, but really we don't emphasize things that matter to everyone. And what matters to everyone really, all of us, are first fixing our relationships at home uh, by fixing our relationship with Allah Azza wa Jal. And then the second thing I'd say, that the, so the first I'd reiterate is family. The second thing I'd argue is I think the knowledge of Islam is very easy. It's not difficult. Uh, even the practice of Islam is easy, it's not difficult. But there's something that kind of a, it's a prerequisite, something that comes before the practice of Islam and the knowledge of Islam that is kind of a requirement for making Islam beautiful is human decency. Like the fitrah, what Allah Azza wa Jal calls the fitrah, uh, you know, and you know, uh, ethics, what the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi was described with as khuluq, inna ka la'ala khuluq in azim, basic common decency, morality and ethics. In other words, we as an ummah, we have to emphasize what is the right thing to do in business dealings, in you know, the rights of our neighbors, in the way we drive our cars, in the way that we, you know, uh, we deal with each other when we're traveling, in the way that we deal with, you know, kids deal with each other at school, how siblings deal with each other when they have to share things. There's a lack of basic ethics. There's a lot of greed. There's a lot of selfishness. There's a lot of lack of courtesy for others. There's a lot of insensitivity. And these things are actually not just something Islam teaches us. It's a, something Allah taught us inside our souls. It's something that's already there. Islam came to perfect it. The problem I see in many societies that even make a big deal out of Islam, they emphasize Islam, is that the ethics are assumed. In other words, you assume that people are going to be moral and responsible and caring for their, their surroundings and all of these things. And so we, we learn things like aqidah and fiqh and tafsir and ulum and we go into the Islamic sciences. And so you'll find people that are very knowledgeable Islamically, but really ethically they're not very mature. So they don't have a problem throwing something on the street or they don't have a problem you know, making noise when their neighbor's trying to go to sleep or something like that. And yet they're going to pray tahajjud. So I mean, maybe in a spiritual sense they're growing and in an in, in academic sense even in Islam they're growing, but morally and ethically they're not growing. So there's, we need to combine those two things again. The, more, the stronger we become in our deen, the more responsible citizens we become. So those would be, I think, two major things that the Ummah should focus and recalibrate its attention on. SubhanAllah, I mean, this is not a mystery to us. The qualities of a successful Muslim and a Muslim are something Allah highlights in Quran on multiple occasions. I think uh, if one was to take a, a basic course, 
here's a successful Muslim, then Surah Al-Mu'minun's beginning is the best place to look. I mean, there's really a checklist of things that we should be accomplishing in our life. And if we're able to do those things, then we're heading towards success. قَدَ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ And if we're not accomplishing those things, then there's something missing. And really, I think that that beginning of the 23rd Surah is something that we should literally have in the mirror. Like when you look in the mirror, you ask yourself, الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنِ اللَّغْبِ مُعْلِلُونَ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِلزَّكَاتِ فَعِلُونَ All the things Allah highlights. How was my khushu'a today? Check. Should I put a check or should I put an X? You know? Did I make a lot of useless conversation today? Did I waste my time and other people's time with useless activities? Or did I do something productive with my time? Then, you know, so you just kind of go through it one by one by one by one and see where you stand. And subhanAllah, it begins and ends with salat, but it begins with the quality of prayer and it ends with the, the consistency of prayer. So it's as though Allah Azza wa Jal wants both of those things from us. And that's the beginning and end of what will make us successful. The last comment I want to make about that is, you know, successful Muslims, it seems that as though Allah is teaching us, successful Muslims are Muslims that learn something or learn to transform themselves through Salat. Because the conversation began with Salat and the conversation ends with Salat and all the other transformations are in between. So all of the things that are going to change about ourselves have something to do with our Salat. And the problem is a lot of times our prayer becomes artificial. We just go through the motions and do it because we're used to doing it. Everybody else is doing it. But it doesn't really transform us. So we have to give a really, I have to do this. Everyone individually has to do this. Really seriously think about how Salat can transform, change me as a person, inshallah ta'ala. What is the best method of da'wah? I think uh, you and I are never going to be able to answer that question with any kind of credibility. Allah's messengers who were trained by Him, alayhi salatu wasalam, are our guide on what da'wah really means. Because you and I can give talks and give reminder to people and move on and do our business. But these were the people that, whether people like to hear what they have to say or not, whether they liked them or they hated them, they had to deliver a message. And they, couldn't, they didn't just do it once in a while, they had to do this the entirety of their mission. You know, I mean, when you think of Nuh salam, it's beyond human imagination to go for that long, you know, uh, to 950 years, illa khamsina aman, to stay for that long within the same people, generation after generation after generation, and continue. So, a lot of times people look for what's the best thing to do. And it's not, it may not be one thing, but there are some ingredients that if you study the Prophets, alayhim salam, and how they delivered Islam, there are some qualities. And the first of them, I would say, is love of the people. Uh, and I really, I think the, the example to study, before any other Prophet, the example to study in this subject, in the Qur'an is Nuh alayhi salam. Because Allah told him, you know, an uh, qawmak, warn your people. Allah didn't say warn them, He said warn your people. Now He said the, the, the qawmak is because Allah wants him to feel a love for His people before He does da'wah to them. So He can't be angry at them, He can't hate them, He can't, you know, look down on them because they're His people, it's His family. So if that love and that concern is not there, forget da'wah. You're not, you should not be doing da'wah if you're an angry person. You should not be doing da'wah if you don't have patience. You should not be doing da'wah if you don't care. If you just want to yell at people and make them feel bad and you don't really want to help them, then da'wah is not for you. Maybe it's better you don't do da'wah. But da'wah is for people who have concern, who really care, you know. Inni lakum nadhirun mubin. His words even. I'm doing this for you, not for myself. I'm, ju I'm, I'm worried about you. And you can spit at me and you can turn away from me and you can say the most insulting things to me, but I'm not, I can't stop because I'm worried about you. So that would be the first thing. The second thing with da'wah is that we, don't, we shouldn't think that we're there to impress people. And we're, you know, uh, the message of Islam is not a performance. It's this clear, direct, beautiful message. So we don't have to change it to, or make it you know, creative to make it interesting to people. We just have to be sincere. If you're yourself and you can be sincere in delivering the message as best you can, then the rest is up to Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean, how many different ways is Nuh alayhi salam going to preach his message? He doesn't have a lot of variety in what he's going to say. He's going to say the same thing over and over and over again. So you don't have to think about, well, what, what else can I say? What new thing can I come up with? It's not about coming up with new things. It's about coming up with sincere, consistent, you know, honest and direct things. So those would be at least a couple of ingredients of what could make da'wah successful. 
And the, the rest, I would just, last thing I'd say is that we should really carefully study the conversations of Prophets in the Qur'an. What Allah tells us about the Prophets and how they spoke. And that will give us a lot of insight into how we should carry ourselves when we speak.